So today, I think we have Ben Simmons, and after him, we have Keith. This is my addition to the Path to Michigan series. Uh, Deshaun asked Kevin and I to put together some presentations, so if you want to have him do that. Um, mine's probably going to be not as long as some of the other ones, but right So, born May 6, really into music, boats, of course, kind of self explanatory. I'm into the outdoors. Um, but a common dislike for a lot of uh, us is paying for food, uh, maybe lifting heavy things. I don't know. Go to the gym sometimes. Um, these are some childhood pictures. Uh, I was never really a, a sack race champion, but I don't know. Pretty close to the finish line. I don't remember if I finished or not. Uh, got some family going. My mom up on the right, me and my mom at a tailgate. Uh, my dad's in the red, white, and blue down on the on the left. Um, that's when we went out um, off the coast of Florida and we visited family. So my dad's side of the family is from uh, Georgia and Florida kind of area, and my mom's from Michigan. So we, me and my dad would always uh, go and do these road trips. That's a picture from one of them on the bottom right, um, all the way from Michigan down to Florida. Seeing family, visiting, doing some fun stuff. Uh, a lot of it involved going outside, um, just hanging out, camping. Um, and then my girlfriend in the middle. Um, talk more about that car a little bit later. <laughs> so where I'm from, uh, St. Clair Shores, Michigan. So it's only about an hour away from here. Um, Ann Arbor is just west on this map, um, just north of Detroit. And we're on the Lake St. Clair. Um, which is the heart of the Great Lakes. I didn't put it in a larger picture, but they call it the heart of the Great Lakes because it's shaped like a heart and it connects Lake Huron to uh, Lake Erie. So that's the only way that a uh, freight can go out of the Great Lakes and into the ocean. So it's a pretty big deal. Lake Shore, Lake Viewer, South Lake. Lake Shore. Oh, same. Yeah. Um, yeah. Arrow points right to where my house is. So <laughs> Uh, some more about St. Clair Shores. You got the, the nautical mile, lots of boats, it's kind of just this stretch with a couple restaurants um, and a bunch of marinas. That's uh, walking out on the frozen ice, go ice fishing every once in a while. Um, fishing's really big. All my friends are big fishermen. I'm not, I'm not so into it, but I like to go cast a line now and then. So why boats? Why not? Around the water. Uh, that's on my on the top and left are on my friend's little 10 foot boat and i mean that's pretty much the, the extent of my boating experience prior to coming to school just hanging out on the water fishing having a good time tying up with other people um and then i've always grown up going on a, a river so that's a whole canoe base the rifle river uh done a bunch of canoe trips up there done a couple of canoe trips all over the place. Um, but that was one where we were just hanging out. Nice little weekend trip. Um, always love just being outside on the water. A good chance. Uh, so prior to Michigan, kind of in high school, I played guitar from a very young age. I started around seven years old. That picture uh, with all the trippy lights is my first band uh, playing a show. Um, that car in the middle is actually a project car that me and my dad uh, kind of put together over the years. It's a 1970 El Camino for those who care. Um, missing a couple parts in that picture, um, but right now it's looking a little bit better. I didn't have one that I could find. And then that bottom left picture is actually, uh, it's called Kite Monroe, and it's uh, this baseball diamond complex, sports complex thing. And that's kind of where I worked for my high school job. And then even some of my summer jobs is uh, doing city maintenance, working for parks and recreation. Um, if you ever wondered how the, the lines show up on the baseball field, that's kind of the job that I was doing. Um, you know, garbage, all the, all the fun stuff. And then, yeah, graduating. Graduated high school, uh, pretty studious, um, which kind of leads into after high school, I applied to Lawrence Tech in uh, Southfield, Michigan. I was pretty dead set on uh, architectural engineering, which is just kind of civil and uh, mechy kind of, or yeah, civil mechy squashed together. Um, Lawrence Tech's a private school, so the, it's pretty expensive. 
um, like more than just baseline in state for for Michigan. My mom urged me to go apply at other places because I really didn't have much of uh, any guidance to go on. Um, so I applied to Michigan and made it in. And I guess uh, my lack of guidance kind of came from neither of my parents went to college. So I'm a first gen in that respect. Um, so I was kind of traversing it on my own when into Michigan. And then, of course, after I got to Michigan, how did I find name? Uh, as most of us did, Warren uh, kind of roped us in. And then the Engineering 110 section, when uh, they were seniors when I was freshman, but I don't remember any of their names, but sure. they did a good job at selling the department. Um, and my Engineering 100 section that I'm sure everybody's taken, uh, I did the biomedical engineering one, and that one really solidified the fact that I don't want to do biomedical engineering. So, well, this was a good fit after I found that out. Um, and then what have I been doing now that I'm here at Michigan? So having a blast for one, uh, pictures from SNAMI. Uh, we got a ship trip uh, picture down there. That's uh, the Barker, I'm pretty sure, um, over in Fincantieri. My first hockey game that I went to, I caught a practice puck. That was pretty legendary. Um, a buddy that I went to, Brady, who graduated last year with me, he was pretty upset over that because he goes to every hockey game and hasn't gotten one. Um, Human-powered submarine on the bottom right, our competition in England. Uh, I'll go over a little bit more of that. i got another slide. And then playing some music. Uh, that's a picture from a show last year in my basement. It's a little, a little dingy. Yeah, good time. Yeah, good time. Yeah, so human powered submarine. Um, been having a blast on this team and uh, really, really proud to be a part of the submarine that we took to England. Um, so, those first two pictures where it's yellow are from our testing phase and uh, it got its final paint job, which I actually don't have a very good picture of um, after the fact. But I can play this video on the left here. And this is over in Gosport, England. And mm -hmm. Yeah, sound. Um, this is over in Gosport, England, and it's at this massive uh, Navy research base. It's like a football field sized pool. Um, and they got this giant arm that swings around. You can kind of see the submarine disappear underneath the water. It ended up performing super well. We had, we had a, a really good competition. Um, yeah. Fastest speed through the timing gates which are right where the submarine's crossing right now. It just measured your speed between those gates. And then uh, the fastest uh, consecutive laps completed. That was, a, that was a good one. Um, but we came runner up overall. Not really sure what led to that decision. Uh, I think it was some uh, insider, you know, something was going on. <laughs> Here's some more pictures from that trip. That, uh, that picture on the bottom right is on the scaffolding, which is like 20 feet up in the air and kind of gives a, a little bit of scale to the building. It's just a massive pool, biggest pool I've seen ever. Um, went and saw all the sites. Um, yeah, there's a the top down picture of them underwater. I'm not a big scuba diver right now. So I, I used to be when I was really little. Um, so I didn't get under the water for this trip, but I, I'd love to start getting back into the water, scuba diving, and then just some pretty pictures. Uh, some more stuff that I've done here, other than human powered submarine is uh, flywheel research. So uh, I did that uh, underneath Professor Collette um, and me and Nate kind of came together and we were tasked with building a demonstrator for the MHL. And what this is, is a, it's basically a control moment gyroscope. If you've seen Seakeeper you know, on boats in industry, it keeps the roll completely flat, um, but it doesn't do much for the other motions. And uh, one of the other things about flywheels is they're mechanical energy devices. So it's pretty much a battery if you hook it up to a, a motor and have it spin the, spin the motor. Um, it's pretty exciting when we got that spinning up the first time. Um, we hit our target. Well, we hit just shy of our target around 2300 RPM, which is still ridiculously fast for like a 30 pound chunk of brass. Um, so that's why it's got the polycarb all the way around it. Um, and then here's another video during testing. This was uh, one of my very first 
kind of like hands-on with electronics. So you can tell by my uh, cable management, that's very pristine. Um, but I, I was jazzed every time I got something to work. Um, this is the tilt sensor controlling the, the angle that the flywheel is at. And later on, we put a PID controller on there that um, would actually do the opposite of the motion. So you could uh, cancel out the roll. And I think we've got some more videos. Yeah, so these are the video videos that the MHL put together from our testing. Um, these turned out awesome. I don't even know if the if it has sound. But basically, these are just some of the diagnostic tests that we ran. Um, so this roll the K1 is holding it at an angle, letting go, and then seeing how fast it takes for it to settle down. Um, so you got a baseline test. Uh, passive test just means that the flywheel was able to move however it wanted. So its control motor wasn't uh, choosing an angle. It does still counteract the roll eventually. And then active, it's running that feedback loop and it's, it's trying to kill that roll as fast as possible. So that's like your, your triple side by side. Pretty cool. And then this other one, um, we use the wave maker to uh, send a, a wave train at it. And this one is really good if you look at the horizon of the tank. Um, the same waves are being thrown at it, same amplitude and everything. You can see how the horizon's a lot more stiff on the right, um, especially as it starts to get excited. So, I mean, it's got a little bit of roll, but I think we got like an 80% roll reduction, which is really cool. And since I've worked on it, um, Noah, who was one of the interns this past summer, um, he completely overhauled it because he's an EE student and he actually made the wires look nice, did, did some really nice things to it. Um, so that's really cool. I'm happy to see it get passed on. Uh, yeah, another thing I've been up to is graduating. I uh, graduated this past year, so that's me with my mom and dad and then uh, the dean over there. Um, so I did my full four years here. Uh, naval architecture. And then this past summer, um, so the summer after graduation, uh, I got my first internship because we had the weird little happenings in between. Um, and this was at Life Proof Boats out in Washington. So it's just, just across the Puget Sound, which is that body of water from Seattle. Um, and they made these really high performance rib boats. Um, they have another company that makes like Government boats and Coast Guard boats, but these ones are more um, more plush for <laughs> consumers. Really expensive, um, but it was a really fun experience because I actually got to design some parts that made it onto boats, like that sonar transducer <laughs> in the bottom left. I was able to make the drawings for all the the metal to get welded together. I was working with um, all the skilled trades to make sure that it could actually get built. Um, and doing that whole design cycle. And it actually made it out on a boat, which is really cool. Um, and then I got to go see some nature. That's Henry on that log. Um, I didn't have that many good pictures of me, but he was my uh, travel buddy the whole time because he was out there interviewing, or not interviewing, uh, working for Art Anderson um, for the summer. Then Dojo Security is my, my band. Um, so these are some, some pictures. The middle ones from a, a more recent show. Um, the bottom two are from a, a photo shoot that we just did um, when we were taking that album cover uh, picture. That was just for our little four song EP. Still working on writing more songs, getting it recorded. So if you look up Dojo Security on Spotify or whatever you have, find it. Put streams up. And then what's next? Um, so I'm going to be going down to Florida at the Brunswick Venture Group. So they're basically in charge of Bayliner, Heyday, Quicksilver, and uh, Utern. Um, a few of those brands are European only. So we're responsible for communicating with Europe. Uh, a lot of back and forth trips to Portugal, I've been told. Um, and then domestically, domestic, um, a lot of trips to Mexico. Yeah, I'll be uh, attending. And 
I'm working as a naval architect. I'm actually doing part time right now. They were they were really cool and set me up with a, a program to get me in. Um, so I'm doing part time right now and be going full throttle once I graduate here in May or April. And I think that's it. How did you decide on uh, looking at kind of smaller boats for your internships? Well, because like human powered submarines, pretty small. Yeah. And then the other, your internship and now your job too. But was there anything in particular that made you decide that? One big thing is um, on the smaller boats, your, your actions have a lot more impact on, a lot more visible impact on the boat itself. If you're working on really big boats, um, work on one system or one part of it but for smaller boats you change the whole of the boat i mean it's a totally new boat you move stuff around you can you can kind of see it right away so i thought that was uh kind of what led me in that path yeah does the el camino still like does it run yeah no it, it runs pretty good now um you took the engine out of a like a 2008 chevy super sport uh blazer um just a eight cylinder uh, small block and then yeah it runs pretty good really loud probably not good for the environment any new uh music coming out from dojo uh i mean check out the the rose and blasted chat for any announcements for for shows in the in the near future uh, hopefully getting a, a couple going. It's the best place to go hear some new music before we get in the studio. <clears throat> All right. Let's pass it off to Kevin now. That's my you got to make sure. I have no, I've already done it seven times. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to get spots. I feel his while he's speaking. Yeah. Uh, so they're, they're all from my high school. Oh, and they're all still in Sinclair Shores. So I only get to see them. Always sending stuff back. Wait, wait, wait. Then they uh, also the best. Yeah. Uh, anybody else? Uh, yeah. so good morning everyone now the moment the my past mission following up ben's excellent presentation so if my accent doesn't give it away i grew up in long island new york <laughs> specifically i grew up in the south shore um, I was the oldest sibling. I've seen my high school graduation photo there. And my ben, I'm also a first generation college student. Actually, funnily enough, both my parents got a job straight out of high school and have been working the same job for roughly 30, 35 years, about. So, like, ben, I didn't have uh, much guidance. But, you know, there's a small school. 
now called web, if uh, people don't know what that is. Now, you might think I've heard about web because, you know, I'm like 20, 30 miles, but um, I think Galen can attest to this. You usually find out about web through very weird ways. <laughs> so if you're not really a sailor, which I wasn't, I found out through a friend of a friend's father's coworker. It's a very roundabout way of finding about web. And so web is on the North shore of Long Island. Um, you can see the Long Island sound right there. Beautiful year round mostly. The groggy like summer weather. It gets very hot and sticky, not fun. But um, at the end of high school, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. At the time I was really into biology and mathematics. So maybe I thought about going to Stony Brook and studying those things there, which is the local um, college there. And actually I didn't really have any boat experience at all. I don't think I stepped foot on a boat until I was in college. But, um, with an ever no nervous mother who had never had to deal with this before about college, I grew to school that was that was only a 25 minute drive away and had no tuitions and very appealing to her. So I applied and thankfully got in. Actually, I was one of the last people to in my class to join the class of 2022. I kept on messing up and uh, it's very last minute. I think it was the last day I, uh, I hit it set. And so if you don't recognize Webb through this, you might recognize some of the movies it's been in. Um, it was in the 1987 um, Batman and Robin movie. This is Wayne Manor. They also used it in the uh, <coughs> most recent Gotham TV show and even more recent, the Joker movie. Um, actually, it filmed when we were still on campus. And so a few of us snuck in, uh, snuck in the attic up here and uh, watched it as they were filming it. You remember that. Um, and so I went from a family of four to a family of 24. Obviously there's more than 24 here, but um, we gain some, we lose some. It's just the way of the intense program of web goes. And now as every family has, there's fun traditions and memories. And I will now go over some of them. <laughs> Standing here, accepting my diploma, I was not really convinced I had completed all the hard work at web. But the professors missed their final opportunity to give me any more assignments, packets, and considering the fact that I was holding my diploma. But really, I don't think they could take it from me. It was in my hands. But it should come as no surprise to me that my time here seemed to race past. As they say, time flies when you're having rum. I mean, fun. <laughs> and holy shit, do we have fun. I have four amazing years of memories with these people, and it seems like a lifetime. So my best efforts to refrain from anecdotes and getting a little sappy it was made at 4 a.m. And so there's a few, few anecdotes over the years. So we started off strong with OE, the scavenger hunt of hilariously embarrassing tasks to complete in New York City, and ended with late night sleepovers and dance parties in the classroom. We then settled to our desks and made the classroom our home and separate into teams to build, design, and race boats on the water. One of my favorite photos in the classroom. This is only freshman year, so you can imagine when you get to know people even better, it gets even wackier. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind the katanas, just the plane. But um, the first thing you do as a freshman is you're put into teams of four, and you have to design yourself, no real help, a little help from upperclassmen with the tools and whatnot, but you build and design your own boat to race. And so... My team designed a catamaran, as we see in there, and due to really just its design and how sleek it was, we basically smelt the competition. The second place team finished five minutes after us, and another two sank. There was a paddle wheel. That was quite fun to see. And so after the competition, we were taught about the magical nature preserve that was right next door, also known as well. Now, whether it was a mandatory Monday, a wine Wednesday, a four local Friday, a killery to Saturday or any day that ended in Y, many traditions, memories, celebrations were had and not remembered at this place. <laughs> and so we moved to sophomore year and it was defined by, well, it's coping mechanisms. <laughs> From stacking objects on our middle-aged classmate, who's actually older than was, he was 32 when he joined my class. Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right. Yeah. Shots fired, man. Yeah, he didn't really like to sleep unless it was at his desk. And so he had never fun game of trying to stack as many objects as we could in his head. I didn't get a photo of it, but we had four of those popcorn cups on there at one point. 
whether it be stacking objects on a classmate's head, taking your anger out on our stab couches. <laughs> the chaos was the only thing that was really keeping us sane. And speaking of chaos, I would like to take note to the administration. Um, you should not leave a uh, student, you should not leave engineers with wooden dowels and rubber bands. They will inevitably build bridges, scissor stick weapons, and of course, crossbows, as can be seen here. <laughs> <laughs> but alas, our plans were quickly foiled. COVID struck two weeks into our spring semester and we were all sent home. A few of us went and stayed with classmates for a sophomore second sleepover semester, and those stories were never dull to hear. We came back to Web our junior year with a new foe in our mornings, the symptom checker. Waking up every morning and groggily filling out a questionnaire might be considered torture in a fair society. But we got through it all the same. We moved into a new classroom filled with only masks and Zoom lectures. It took some time to adjust, but I think we really, really enjoyed those Zoom lectures. I should be seen by the small among us right there. Despite the new building, web never really changes. I cannot tell you how many times I heard the morning birds begin to chirp and I felt my heart sink at the prospect of another sunrise involuntarily witnessed. Just views, sunrise, sunsets, those are the best parts. And so as my class became of age and projects came and went, we slowly began to make our way to the pub as our home as all upper classmen should. Well, actually, the pub used to be fully carpeted, but I was on the student organization's treasury and um, the student, alumni had given directly to the student organization. And so the school couldn't touch that money. And so I was tasked with um, finding ways to spend. It was like 30 grand, I think. And so one of the big projects I overtook was completely changing the floors to wood, which it should be wood, carpet and beard. <laughs> Our senior year started off with a flood of biblical proportions. Knee deep water in the loading dock and skim boarding in the basement hallways were sites of the whole. Actually, I don't know if I zoom in close enough, but he's skim boarding past a transformer. Um, <laughs> after the parting of the seas, we were led back to our promised land, the pub, one of my favorite traditions we had. A hundred days before graduation, the whole senior class sits down and tries to drink a hundred beers. And every time, you finish a beer or drink of your choice. You write on the board your favorite memory of the past four years. And so, as you've seen, there are definitely more than 100, and more than 100 memories were definitely had. But also, instead of just, um, <laughs> instead of only just, oh, it's kind of sad. There you go. Besides doing that, there was also a room connected to the pub, also like an entertainment room for the most part. It became disused with COVID because we weren't really allowed in small spaces and it didn't have any windows. But with the lo loosening of restrictions, um, <coughs> our whole class came together and thought, let's try and make our permanent mark on web. <laughs> and so we completely redesigned the room. We painted it ourselves. We found the paint. We bought the paint. We found new furniture. We put it all together. Um, it was definitely fun. Um, there was definitely a heated debate about what color it should be. Trying to find a common color amongst 24 people, very hard. And of course, I can't talk about my senior year at Webb without talking about thesis. It's the main capstone you do at your times at Webb. Everything in your time here builds to this. And so me and my partner, Gracie, we um, looked into the design of an alphabet cycle, which is just like, imagine a Brayton cycle that used um, supercritical carbon dioxide to make power for the most part. and should technically be carbon neutral because it just recircles any carbon it emits back into itself. Um, but I won't bore you with those details. It was a long presentation. And so with thesis, some people cried, others also cried. <laughs> Whatever the case was, all of us put hard work into a project we should be proud of. And for a bunch of inquisitive idiots, I think we turned out not too bad. Now, in the grand scheme of things, web may have just been a port of call along my voyage, a brief stop on my journey. But for the last four years, I called web my home. I studied there, I played there. I spent long nights at my desk and longer days lying on the grass. I laughed and cried. I lived a life there. I know it's stereotypical of Webbies to think highly of themselves, 
but I truly believe my class was something special. However, my voyage doesn't end there. No. I'm here. At the end of my senior year, I decided I wasn't ready to stop learning yet. And I thought, why not apply to the other only comparable name program in the country? And this has provided me with another irreplaceable family of friends, peers, and advisors. I'm truly thankful for the opportunity to be here and learn amongst a group of extremely bright peers. And I couldn't find out how to fit my internships. I know Webb's known for having four internships you have to do before you graduate. And so I'm just gonna talk about the one I found the most interesting and cool. And so your sophomore year, you need to go on a ship for at least six weeks. I spent 10. <laughs> I um, didn't really have a choice. They shipped me out on Christmas Eve. It's very packed at um, JFK at on Christmas Eve. So I don't recommend flying on that day. And so me and my roommate who I went with on ship, we started our adventure on December 24th in Houston. We stayed in port for two weeks and then headed to the Panama Canal. It took us roughly five days to get here, and it was where I experienced the worst case of seasickness I had in my life, because it was probably, I think, the third time I'd ever been on a boat, and it's not fun. The Panama Canal is probably the coolest part of this whole adventure, though, as you'll see in the next slide. We had a time lapse of the whole thing, too, so I'll show that at the end. From here, we traveled west, going north of Hawaii, and eventually landing in southern Japan. It took roughly 40 days from the canal to um, Tokyo. And God, I miss land. <laughs> it was very, very scenic though. Sometimes the, you'd see humongous waves and you'd feel it. And other times it looked as flat as glass and you couldn't tell the difference some days. But however, this is when this great adventure took a turn for the world. <laughs> as this was the height of COVID in Asia. And the first day we left Japan, when we were all, we had a planned adventure in Japan. We were told due to COVID, we could no longer go aboard. We could no longer go ashore. So, accordingly, we spent another two weeks where we went to um, Ulsan, South Korea, where we eventually got off. And then flew, I flew back home to New York before eventually getting kicked out from Web and go back home for an online semester. And so, I will now show a time lapse I promised earlier. Well, you know, those little um, mechanical things on the left, they're called mules, because back in the day before they had this technology, they used actual mules to move ships to the canals. And so um, this is um this is not the newest canals, these are still Panamax, these aren't the post-Panamax ones. And so I was on a um little tanker. Um I think I dropped the phone here, which is what yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there were there were two clipboards I had to put to even get this angle. So it was very it was shoddy work, but you know, engineers make do. But um but yeah, it was it was beautiful there. Very hot too. Um, but yeah. Unlike Ben, I don't know what I'm doing next. I still have to figure that out. That's on my ever-growing list of things to do still, but I'll hopefully figure that out sooner or later. But I'll now open the floor to any questions. Uh, how did it work that so it was like your classroom, right? Like each grade has their yeah, own. Each, so imagine the MDL and each grade has their own uh, room. You can basically like customize it to your own buyers for the most part. Uh, and so what were like some of your favorite customizations? That you um, definitely any couches. That was very nice. Um, there was an ever-growing collection of memes around the walls. Crossbow, um, that was fun. We would make targets. We broke the fire extinguisher once. Um, just pumpkins. It went really fast. I felt we did some calculations on it. It went, it got beefed up. That one that I showed was only a mark one. So, <laughs> well, what did you kind of do the entire time you were on that ship? Um, so I was basically in an engine room and deck cadet, except I didn't have a lot of the necessary trainings, and so I couldn't do as much as the other cadets. And so I mostly like shadowed the chief engineer and chief officer. Um, I went through, they did a tank cleaning, one of the chemical tankers and I helped through that. Um, but the, the main part of doing that is you're given a, a whole project that you need to complete on that time there, where you basically like, you map all the major systems, you talk to basically everyone on there and ask like, what are some things for someone who's been living, working, their whole life has been on these ships for decades in some cases, 
and what's what do they don't like, what do they really like, and what would they like to see improved in areas in order to get like a different perspective because most engineers don't really spend that much time in the engine room. And it might look good on paper, but it isn't good in practicality. Uh, and where do you have like a closed uh, plan of classes? Like everyone takes the same classes? Yes, every, um, me and my classmates, we all took the same classes except for two. We were allowed to choose um, a technical elective, which I chose programming. Other people took um, like shop class to learn more about welding. And I heard there was another one, maybe it was marine biology. And the other is um, a general elective. Like I took a psychology class. Other people took an Egyptology class. But um, yeah, everyone takes same classes all throughout, everyone the same education. You can't fail a class at web. If you fail, you, you're kicked out in class and you have to if you let back in, redo the whole year. Um, so it's very stressful, which is why there are staff couches. Well, all of you just have a major, right? Mm, yes. Okay. Oh, no, no, you all just have a bachelor's. There's a minor in the... In no. Okay. It's all just one degree. Okay. Thanks. Um, what were the other boats you got to go on again? Um, I went on a chemical tanker. A few people went on. A few people went on ferries. Someone put on a lumber carrier in Australia. Um, another was a, a military ship. Another was a research vessel in Seattle. Um, my class didn't fully go. We we're supposed to go over the summer when COVID hit. And then they just couldn't find enough ships for us to go on. So they kind of loosened that restriction for half my class, sadly. But it, was there ever a rematch with the catamaran, too, that you built? No, I, we lost it. Um, there, there was, at, one, at one point, we took one of the boats and towed it to um, our Boston whaler. And we took it and it tore to pieces in the Long Island Sound to the waves. Um, first, before anyone asks if we can get stab couches, the answer is no. <laughs> but I have a few more questions about web. So the building is huge. So I assume you guys, you live there? We live, eat, and work all in the same building, basically. Okay, so do you live in the same room, like all four years, or do you switch yeah. around? Um, the more seniority you have, the better room you get. Um, maybe I can show you. <laughs> <laughs> the rent <laughs> uh but the, i mean it's like for room and board it is it's 18k a year um yeah. but that covers basically all the food you can eat um, a lot of activities there's a lot of free stuff there like they'll willingly take you to new york city a lot of the times so just on the weekends like they'll provide transportation we own like four like um minivans for the most part and we can take those out penalty okay. whenever we want we just need to like sign it out and like ask for it mostly but um i think yeah you can see it here but these are all rooms here and so this is the first floor there's no rooms and then there's floors here and here um the old classrooms used to be in these little outperches here and then this is a balcony and so basically the ultimate goal of senior year is to try and get those balcony rooms um but yeah how far is the closest town uh, Glen Cove is a five minute drive. Um, it's everything you need. New York City is like a half hour a half hour drive to the nearest like subway, and then you're in the city from there for the most part. So you have to get along with your classmates. You don't have to. It makes your life a lot easier. I mean, it's like a family. You don't okay. get along with everyone in your family, do you? No, but another story. Is the back cave underneath? Yes. Um, uh, I don't think you can see the back cave's farther this way, which is where we just do our laundry. I don't know why it's called the back cave, but there's a long underground tunnel, tunnel that connects from here basically to all the way over here. So it's a very long track. We do laundry sometimes. Wasn't there a remodel recently? Is that the yes. classrooms? Uh, yes. And so um, this edition was finished my sophomore year. These are the new classrooms here. These used to be the old ones. These were converted to dorm rooms. And even though it's been four years, they're still not approved by the fire marshal yet. That's a different story. But yeah, these new classrooms here, this is the whole new academic routine for the most part. And so it was definitely like, mostly it was almost double the size of the old classrooms. Everyone used to be a lot more crunched in together. Are there athletics at all? Yes, yeah, there are athletics. Um, we're not good. Um, we won our first <laughs> basketball game in 50 years um, this past year. 
Um, yeah, we're good at sailing. We are we are really good at sailing. That's besides that. I forgot about that one. But we're really good at um most sailing. Um dinghy, big boat, 20s. <laughs> Uh, there, there was an attempt to get cruising going once, but then we continued it. There's no more questions then. Does it surprise you that like we're so curious? About <laughs> it's definitely. You know. <laughs> I mean, I only hold tip of the iceberg of stories. I have plenty of stories. My first internship, I got kidnapped. Like, like an inter when I was on ship, uh, they almost medi vacuumed me off because I was like starving basically. But there's a lot, there's a lot of fun and interesting. Oh, why did you get kidnapped? Let's not hop over that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, anyway, I'm 18 at the time. Um, I just moved to uh, North Charleston, South Carolina yeah. in this house. Um, the company put me in a house that was like five community drive from the shipyard really wasn't your area i was told if you go north about a block you would probably be shot and stabbed so it was i think 7 p.m i had two classmates with me one was showering the other was asleep and it was maybe it was five it was five to seven and then an older guy probably 40s he walks in um to tell he was on something and he just keeps demanding that i give him a ride and me being dumb and 18 was like yeah, I'll, I'll get you out of the house so you don't stab me and my classmates. At least you stab me. But um, and so we're driving. It's probably half an hour. I didn't really know the area, but after a while, I learned we were just kind of just driving in circles for the most part. And then we passed by these two parked cars. So imagine like a one way each way, and there's two parked cars. And we drive by them. I'm slowly because I'm like maneuvering around. And the guy's like, "Here he is, get him!" And then the guy who's driving is like, "Floor it!" So I floor it. Um, <laughs> and so eventually you notice there's a cop car uh trailing me and then i eventually get pulled over he's like oh the sun you don't have your headlights on it was like a car from the 1980s i didn't know how to turn the headlights on honestly it was a stroke of luck i didn't die there um and so i like i like basically mouth the words help i'm being kidnapped <laughs> um and then he takes both of us out i didn't even have my id on I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't on me at all. Um, in a car that wasn't mine, we pulled because it was the the president of the company's like they know him just a small town and all that. And so they call him. They're like, "Do you have an 18 year old driving your car?" And he's like, "Yeah, why?" He's like, "Well, he just got kidnapped." Um, and so they pulled the other guy out. And he's like, "What do you mean? That's my buddy from Vietnam. I'm 18. Am I from Vietnam?" <laughs> Um, so definitely out of his mind in one way or another. And uh, the police officer pulled me aside afterwards and said, I guess you're book smart, not street smart. And then I went home and I, I made sure the doors were always locked after that. <laughs> you should walk into your house. Yeah. Uh, the, the houses around there were company owned. I, we la I later found out he was an ex-employee who was wanted because he recently stole a car from the company and was joyriding for the past few weeks. And so I start my first day of work the next day. I haven't even worked at the company yet. And PR people ask, oh, how was your night? And we're all one, all right. Well, and we're doing our HR training and whatnot. And then president and vice president of the company come in and personally apologize to me for what had happened. And that, that all happens. I'm like, oh, no, it's, it's all right. I was very worried, but I, I fell asleep eventually. Um, and then the HR people are like, why didn't you say anything? I'm like, oh, I didn't really think of it. Um, so, yeah, lucky to be here, I guess, is the moral of the story. How was Vietnam? <laughs> Anyone ever has questions at all? I've already talked to you about so. All right. Thank you so much for listening to me ramble for a